Hello everybody and welcome back to Advanced Maths. Today we're looking at Grade 9 questions on straight line graphs. Now this video is difficult. If you are not confident in straight line graphs, it's time to pause the video and revise straight line graphs now. Check out the link in the description for our um, straight line graphs revision page. If you're confident, let's start with example 1. It says P has the coordinates minus 9 and 5 and Q has coordinates 16 and 15. M is the point on line segment PQ such that P to M to M to Q is 2 to 3. The line L is perpendicular to the line segment PQ. L passes through M. Find an equation of L. So the first thing we're going to do is draw a picture of this. So we sketch this out in the exam to give us ourselves an idea of what this looks like. Here we've got P and Q roughly drawn of where they are. And we've also got some other point M on this line. And it says M is in, uh, the distance from P to M to M to Q. Those distances are in a ratio of 2 to 3. To be in a ratio of 2 to 3 means we're splitting it into fifths. Because we've got 2 bits and 3 bits, 5 bits. M is 2 fifths of the way from P to uh, Q. So we're focusing on that the idea that it's two-fifths of the way along. We'll start with the x distance here. We're going from minus 9 to 16. That is 25 units across. And we want to go two-fifths of 25 across. 25 times two-fifths is 10. That distance is 10. Minus 9 plus 10 is 1. So the x coordinate here is 1. We're going to repeat that whole process again for the y coordinates here. We're going from 5 to 15, and that means we're going up 10 spaces. And 2 fifths of 10 is 4. So we're going 4 spaces up. 5 plus 4 is 9. We're going up to a y coordinate of 9. We have found the coordinates of m. This is really helpful because now we're going to try and find the perpendicular line that goes through m. And we'll use the equation of the gradient between p and q, and afterwards we'll make it perpendicular. Substitute the numbers in like this. And we'll work that out to be 10 25ths, which simplifies to be 2 fifths. That is the parallel gradient between P and Q. To make it perpendicular, we'll flip it upside down and make it negative. We get minus 5 over 2. That is a perpendicular gra uh, gradient. Now we want a line that has that gradient, so we're going to do Y equals MX plus C and substitute the gradient in. Now we also want it to go through 1, 9, so substitute 1 and 9 in. X equals 1 and Y equals 9. When you rearrange and solve this equation, you get that C is 23 over 2. Substitute that back into the equation of the line. Y equals minus 5 over 2x plus C, and C is 23 over 2. We get the final answer of the line, L. We have finished question 1. You may want to rewind and watch that again so that you understand each step in full. It takes a few people, it takes many people, a few watches to fully understand every step. Let's look at example two now. ABC is an isosceles triangle with AB is equal to AC. That means those two lines are equal because it's isosceles. B is a point with coordinates minus four, nine, and C is a, a point with coordinates two, 13. M is a midpoint between B and C. If an equation of the line through points A and M, and we give that answer in the form ax plus by equals c, where a, b, and c are integers to be found. Integers means whole numbers. So again, we draw a sketch of what we're looking at here. And this is roughly what this looks like. We've got an isosceles triangle, a, b, and c. We don't know what a is, but we know what b and c is. And we can draw that isosceles triangle here. And we've also got a midpoint between b and c. And we're interested in the line between A and M, like this. And basically, when we, just, when we look at this, we're just looking for, actually, the perpendicular bisector between B and C. 
I have a video on finding perpendicular bisectors on graphs, and I will link that in the description below, so you can watch that in more detail if you wish. Now, let's find the gradient between uh, B and C. We've also found the midpoint there, which is minus 1 at 11. That's the midpoint. And the gradient looks like this. We substitute the numbers in to find the gradient between B and C. That gives a gradient of 4 sixths or 2 thirds. We're going to make this line go through the coordinate minus 1, 11 because it goes through the midpoint. So y equals 2 thirds x plus c. Substitute the numbers in like this. And we solve for c. We get 35 over 3. The gradient of uh, the, sorry, the y-intercept is 35 over 3. But we wanted the equation to form ax plus by equals c. That means all the x's and y's need to be on the same side. And the coefficient of y and a and x must be a whole number, must be an integer. We'll start by multiplying everything by 3. This gets rid of fractions, so we've got integers. We've multiplied every fraction, everything by 3, and that's got rid of the denominators of 3. We'll now move the x's to the other side, minus 2x plus 3y equals 35, and that is the final answer. We've got it in the form that the question asked for. That's how you do example two. And that one involved an isosceles triangle. So the idea of an isosceles triangle being split in half is actually just a perpendicular bisector. Because when you split an isosceles triangle in half, it splits it in half at right angles down the center. A perpendicular bisector. If you'd like more help on perpendicular bisectors, watch my perpendicular bisector video. Finally, let's look at example 3. The points P, Q and R have coordinates 3, 5, A, 8 and 7, B. P and Q lie on the same vertical line. The gradient of the line P, R is minus 3. Find the coordinates of R and find the area of the triangle P, Q, R. Again, it's probably a good idea to draw this on a grid. And we've definitely got the coordinates 3, 5 for P here. Point Q has the coordinates A, 8. And crucially, P and Q lie on the same vertical line. So if you draw a vertical line from P, Q must be somewhere on this line. And because it's got a Y coordinate of 8, it's above P. The coordinate will be A, 8, where A is 3. Because it's on the same vertical line, it's on the same x-coordinate. It's the same distance across and a little bit higher. So we've understood the wording of the question to mean that Q is directly above P and it has a coordinate of 3, 8. We found the coordinates of Q. Now we've also got a point R, which has an x-coordinate of 7, so it's a bit further across. And it's somewhere over here, but it might be higher, it might be lower. We don't really know where R is yet, we just know that it's got an x coordinate of 7, so it's 7 across. We do know, though, that P to R has a coordinate as a gradient of minus 3. So we'll draw a line with a gradient of minus 3 here, and so R must be touching this blue line. It must be down here somewhere. And we know that we've gone 4 across to go from 3 to 7, the x coordinate is 7. That means we must go minus 12 down, because that's what a gradient of minus 3 means. If you go 1 across, you go minus 3 down, 2 across, minus 6 down, 3 across, minus 9 down, 4 across, minus uh, 12 down. And so to go 12 down here, 5 minus 12 is minus 7. The coordinate of r is minus 7. 7 minus 7, and so we found the coordinates of R. Now we're interested in finding the area of the triangle PQR. And so this triangle here is what we're interested in. And this triangle has a base of 3 from 5 to 8. That means it's 3, uh, its length there is 3. And its height is 4 across, 
because the, uh, the height of this triangle goes from 3 to 7 for a cross. To work out the area of this triangle, we're going to do base times height divided by 2. 3 times 4 divided by 2 is 6 units squared. It's not centimetres squared, it's units squared, because it's on a grid, it's a bit vague as to what the exact units are. So just say units squared. That is the final answer. I would recommend re-watching this video a few times so you really understand how to solve these tricky exam style questions. Thank you for watching this week's video from Advanced Maths. Remember to like and subscribe to support the channel. There are a lot more videos available on the uh, website and on the YouTube channel to help you master all of GCSE Maths. Make sure you check the rest of them out and use it to revise for all of your GCSE topics. Thank you for watching and good luck in your exams.